Good evening and welcome to another Monday Night Live. I'm back from the sunshine of Portugal. That's why you're wearing white. I bought the white out so that I can really push on my... Sorry, I was just turning down the uh, laptop there. Push on the old suntan with the yeah. white shirt. Nice. I mean, why wouldn't you? Well, why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, why wouldn't you? Yeah. It was lovely to see you and Matty, uh, or Matty stepping in to the yeah, brink yeah. last week and having another. It's very kind of him. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't watch for too long because I always have an inferiority complex when he starts swinging the golf club. I thought you were going to say that you were onto your second bottle of wine. I was that too. No, no I had a dry week last week. I had a dry mm. week last night. I know I was very well behaved. Do you feel okay as a result? I do actually. Yeah, yeah. Way, it's disappointingly good, probably. <laughs> way better. So a lot, lot happened at the weekend in the yeah. world roundup of the world of golf. I think mm. it's nice to start off with the ladies' game. Uh, mm. Nelly Corder had a win at the yeah. weekend, uh, <laughs> and she goes back to world number one. Yeah, I mean, she was up. If I remember right, she was up the whole week, um, and I think you're getting a great feel. Um, just seemed to really build into a bit of a climax. I was trying to follow it. The, the only pity, I think, is, is the lack of coverage for us over here of it. I think it's a, it's a crying shame that you, you, you know, if you happen to have something that can access a US channel, it's on, I think it was on Peacock or something like that in the States. That's right, Peacock, um, yeah. Just, it's such a pity it's so you're unable to watch it because that, that looks like it had a great finish. It really did. And Jesper won on the Svensson, uh, Svensson uh, won on the DP World Tour mm. up against Kiradesh Afi Barnrat, bless you. I've uh, got a great story about him uh, a little bit later, yeah. which I will happily share. And how, how hard is that last hole, by the way? I mean, the three, yeah. three hole playoff. Um, and for, it's hard enough for them to hold the green with a wedge in <coughs> hand, let alone, you know, if, if you, you know, if you, local weekend warrior going and playing. They must take about 100 to try and keep it on the green. That's the only golf course uh, when I was out on tour that I nearly passed out at. Uh, It was seriously hot. There was a par three uh, in a corner. I can't really remember quite whereabouts Mm. on the course it was, but it was so hot Mm. that with the humidity carrying the bag and coach, it was Mm. like... For those that aren't aware, it's Singapore. Um, this last yeah, week, which yeah. you know, I, I know people who've gone out to do Asian tour school and have literally thought they were drinking loads of water and fainted on course. Yeah, not yeah. good at all. Mm. Out in the US, uh, I forget the surname. Peter Malnati. Yes, well done. He uh, of the funny hat. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He had won since 2015. I think, I think it's that long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So him and Joel Damon are the ones with the the kind of the bucket hat kind bucket of things. Hat, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's he's one of these players that he, he doesn't. He's relatively ungainly in my opinion but um but he's kind of there on tough courses he tends to be there or thereabouts um awesome. he's often up there at pebble um small greens and narrow and tight and fiddly um and yeah copper had just a tough course yeah charlie Howe unfortunately had a bit of a bad finish she was second going into the last hole yeah. had a little bit of a hiccup Rocking, not to down to 10. Mm. yeah but relentless in a uh, performances this year obviously working with yeah. kr strength and conditioning coach mm. uh, from what we've heard very, very upbeat about the performance yeah. yet again, though, and I think that's really testament to Charlie where she's at mentality, physically. Her game mm. does a lot of work, obviously, with her golf coach as well. Yeah, you know, amount. on all areas of the game, an absolute golf nut when it yeah. comes to playing away from tournaments. Uh, great to see this momentum building. You know, I was looking. She's just there uh, and there absolutely. and there and there, isn't she? Yeah. She's I was definitely. looking at when no, I was just saying, looking at her world ranking uh, mm. points and and her performances. And it's only a, I think it's only a matter of time that she's going to be top three. Oh, yeah, I mean, you look at the, the two major second places last year. Um, you know, this last week had a, a bit of a rocky start, and then just belt just came on and on and on and on through the rounds. And were it not for a slightly funky finish, she was you know second went from second to tenth in the space of a couple of holes through a, a double and a bogey at the end. But you know, she's it, it's it's trending every which way you'd want to. And I I can honestly say I don't know of anyone that works harder. No. Um, she's unbelievable at how hard she works, whether it's in the gym, she's always at Fox Hill practicing. Uh, no matter, um, I mean, one of the guys who does the Winter League, um, he's a member there, he said, doesn't matter what the weather is, she's out there practicing. He goes, maybe we should be doing that yeah, as well. Yeah, maybe you know, there's something in it. Absolutely relentless. As per usual, we've got the discs in front of us. Um, so if you are wishing to mm. ask us any questions, feel free to fire them over. We are going to start up right after a couple of questions with a little bit of fun yep. uh, mr keith mitchell hold out quite a fun little shot on saturday for an eagle on 18 to hit the lead and i've set up Have that you? shot 
Oh, so lovely. you and I are going to have a little go and see how close we can put it. He loves it in shots, isn't he? I thought, why not? Yeah, why well, not? Well, Seeing why as we you? can, why, why not? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. As per usual, we've got both our channels, uh, Good Golf Coaching and, of course, Precision Golf channels. Uh, you can mm. fire on either of those and ask us any questions. We're getting more and more questions in yeah. here, and Great so I think well. we need to crack on in. Right. So we'll start off. We'll start off with Precision Golf Channel. Um, Chris Powell, hi guys. Had a great fitting with Simon a few weeks ago. I found recently that addressing the ball from the toe of the club enables me to hit much better strikes. I've noticed Simon also does it. All the best players do this. What, what is the reason uh, new irons are money? By the way, um, I mean, so for me, I. I've all, historically had a bit of a lateral uh, move, so as I've come back into the ball, that's then I've then sent the club away from me. I have never suffered with shanks, but I can only assume that over the years I might have migrated into the heel a little bit <laughs> contact-wise and subconsciously just <coughs> worked a little further away from it. It's um, something I get asked quite a lot. It's not a conscious thing, it's just something that I, and as I start, I think I settle my weight into my heels a little bit, which it doesn't matter how hard I try not to do it, it happens. Sometimes when the equipment change, very briefly, if you get a setup that allows you to free up a bit more than where you used to address the ball and get a centered strike, you're now getting a fuller extension so the strike can go to the heel. So standing slightly further away can help just to kind of level that off. Absolutely. Joseph F uh, Faraby, uh, I absolutely love both channels. Priceless wisdom on both. Thank you so much. You are very welcome indeed, Joseph. Very kind. Uh, driving range king. Can shaft tipping help reduce driver launch angle? Currently average 16.5 uh, degrees uh, mes measured at Precision Golf with nine degree TSI three with tip sensei white. Um, in principle, a fraction, but what you've got to think of is how much, if you're taking off a half an inch or an inch, um, even, if it's, even if it's as much of an inch of the tip of the shaft, how much actual shaft bend are you actually taking out? The answer is not very much. So really, you're going to do far more with loft of the club or with impact position from a swing point of view. So tipping is a really, really marginal way of reducing spin a little bit, but you're not going to change launch angle by much. Very good. Kyle Millard, you're doing much better on these short answers, by the way. I really like that. Isn't he answering short? It's, only, it's only taken me 18 years. To, well, to there's a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kyle Millard, um, <laughs> hi guys. Uh, what swing weight progression do you build a uh, pitching wedge four iron to? Um, so generally, it's roughly half a point every other club. So 0.2 slash 0.3 per club um, as you go from four iron through to pitch wedge. It sometimes ramps up a little bit more at the very bottom depending on the player, but um, that's, that's the base one we build to. Very good. Dave Hurley, good evening both. Good evening to nice you, to David. Me. Thank you, and nice to have you here. Papa B, cheers, gents. Uh, you are welcome. Stuart, could you please give your opinion on long versus short lead side thumb in the grip? Okay, I can quickly do that for you. So, lead side thumb. Uh, I actually did a video oh, oh. on this. Uh, you can check it out on my YouTube channel, Good Golf Coaching. The lead side thumb, obviously, uh, for a right-handed golfer, will be your left thumb. And we talk about whether we want the thumb to be short or long. Now, for all of the golfers in the world out there that have an overswing, I would absolutely recommend going short. Because what it does is it creates a little bit more pressure up on the shaft. So that when you're at the top of the backswing, it will allow the head to feel more pressure outwards. And what you'll actually feel in doing that is that you'll actually feel a little bit of a gap in here underneath your grip if you're making a short thumb. And what it'll actually help you do as well, if you get a little bit too narrow in your downswing, it will give you a little bit of help on getting it a bit wider so that you might be able to unload it a little bit more. For those of you that are looking for a little bit more lag and trying to get a little bit more of a longer swing, I would recommend having a longer thumb. All of a sudden that gap will now disappear in the hand. So you can see as I shorten my thumb, gap appears. As I lengthen my thumb, gap disappears. And so by having a longer thumb, you'll get a little bit more leverage. What are you, short or long? Um, that's a very personal question. <laughs> um, I, 
I honestly don't know. I've always thought I had a long thumb. Right. But actually... No, I think I, you're a shorty. I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah. I'm a short one. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a short one. Let's not go anywhere. Right. Good admission. So, yeah. in principle, yeah. short thumb, shortens up back swings, makes the club a little bit wider. Long thumbs, mm. gives you a little bit more length in your back swing and gives you a little bit more leverage on the way down for a little bit more lag if you are looking for some of that. So actually it makes sense why I would be shorter because I, I, yeah. I go yeah. over there somewhere on, when it goes wrong. A bit so, narrow yeah. as well, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Hope that answers the, your question. Uh, Minsock Park, Arcos Sensor uh, mm. versus Grip. What are your thoughts on the two? I'm considering getting into Arcos for stats tracking, starting with my new clubs from a club building point of view both of them are a bit pain in the backside um to be honest yeah. um in that uh, we looked at it a little bit with matt last week the the, the arcos sensor in the top built into the top of the grip you, the the cap itself is about three eighths of an inch so what it often does is so we build to the cut length of the shaft because you get slightly varying grip caps on different models um but what can happen is the player can then grip to the top of the Arcos sensor, extending the club by three eighths of an inch and swinging really heavy. Um, the screw in Arcos sensors are heavier and do slightly affect the way the club swings. So the, the lesser of the evils is the one that's built in, but you have to grip it at the bottom of that grip cap. Very good. And I'll do one more on here and then I'll jump across to mm. my channel. Sam Barnes 25 would like to say thank you to Simon for the full bag fit this morning. Has the little red tea come down from the ceiling yet, Sam? No, it was an incredible trick shot. There's a little red tea on the top of the, the one of these, which <laughs> I, I didn't think it was possible to see on the top of that. No, Sam, thank, thank you very much. Great fun this morning. Um, very, very sensitive to waiting. Got a real kind of snap, loads of speed. Yeah. Um, so good fun fit. Thank Brilliant. you. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Bama number one, good evening, gents. Uh, this is the first uh, complimentary uh, comment about us. Uh, oh, well, they're called both the of, for both of you, Well, that's a good start. Both of you are fit and have slim physiques. <laughs> Obviously, got I some think, sort I of think filter. What you will, I think what I find is I have a slim physique. I am certainly not fit. <laughs> <laughs> sadly. What about those who have a big middle section? Uh, will that have any impact on swing mechanics? asking for a friend well let me give you a little answer for your friend bama number one mm. i think principally when you have um what i like to call a lean back you know when you've got something that's hanging over the belt and if if you've got a bit of a lean back what you tend to see is arm planes tend to get a little bit uh, above you and i think you in general have slightly less leg action so arm swings get a little bit steeper, sh uh, hip turns start to get a little bit shorter. The added advantage that you have got though is you've got more to make you feel like you've got some contact with your arms and your torso. So if you are a little bit in the middle, you get a sense that you could actually feel like you could create some contact with your middle and actually start to feel like your lower half could actually control your arm swing a little bit more. So feeling through the middle, feeling the contact on your little bit of paunch there on the arm swing on the way back will help you get a little bit more around the, the ball. As long as you've got a good grip, that will help you draw the golf ball a little bit more. So I would say that use uh, a little bit of extra to make your arms feel like they're a little bit more attached to your body and really feel like the lower half is a bit more active. And I think that will start to balance out what could be, again, could be a little bit of an excessive arm swing that you tend yeah. to see with larger folk in general. Yeah, I think that, that, that one word you said there, balance. Balance is the key. You know, make sure you stay nice and grounded and don't, don't try and do something that takes you off balance because then the strike goes. And so don't try and force something from a swing point of view. 100%. Basher Bill, I have a question. Uh, how do you bring the it's club name, face? Man. It is, it's yeah. brilliant. Perfect for golf, yeah. right? Um, how do you bring the club face down to impact in the exact same position each time? It's driving me crazy. Five centimetres, five centimetres each side, and it's a shank. Thanks. Good question. Bring, grab this so you haven't got to keep going back. Br bring, bringing the face down to the same section, same place each time is down to a good grip. If you've got a good grip, whatever it is, as long as you keep 
the speed and energy in the handle the same, with a light grip, you will invariably make the face react in the same manner. It's fluctuations in speed and energy in a golf swing that will start to change the way your levers, when you're pulling on the club and swinging the club, that will start to change the way the heavy end swings. And if the heavy end is swinging, it will point the face to the left or it will point the face to the right. So speed and energy in the grip in your golf swing is one area that will control where the face points and the other one is where you put your hands on the golf club. So do go over and check out my essential grip guide and I'll give you a good insight into how to grip the golf club. But speed and energy on the golf club and how you grip it will ultimately define where the ball or where the club face is going to point. Now if you're battling with a strike, a good drill is always to get a couple of golf balls, if I can get them out, get a couple of golf balls. I could have helped you there, couldn't I? Yeah, but no, you, <laughs> you, you were holding the iPad and that's, that's a job in itself. If you get yourself a couple of golf balls, and a bit like a, a putting template that you'll see uh, putters uh, practicing on strike, put it either side of the golf club head and then just make some swings and just look to get the club head tracking through the gap. Now, I'm a fairly seasoned player and that scares me because I'm worried about hitting mm. Simon, yeah. but it's really quite a small gap. I mean, it's an inch or so either side. As you get better, you can draw it in. And as you start to draw it in, you can then start hitting golf shots with the balls either side. And if you hit one of the golf balls, you'll then soon find out where the bias of your strike is. But that's a great way of honing in good contact. Mm. Another one for you here. I shall yeah. ask, no, I shall ask, away. ask your question. Uh, from uh, EGRFX. Uh, first time watching LPGA live this weekend. Never noticed before, but most weren't taking divots with their irons and even with the wedges. Why is that? Interesting. So lady golfers in general have a far bigger swing phase in a golf swing than gents do. They have to wait for it a lot, lot more because unfortunately they don't generate as much speed, but they've got still a decent amount of weight. And you tend to see with ladies, ladies golf, you see this incredible drive up mm. of their right legs in most good lady golfers. And that's them trying to get the golf club around. And when they're doing that, they are allowing the golf club to swing. And very rarely do you see, unless you see some really the powerful players like an Anne Van Dam, Laura Davis famously, yeah. do they put lots of energy into the floor. So they're really trying to get this club head to swing down at the bottom to maximize the club head speed. That's why you tend to see lady golfers more as pickers of the golf ball than guys that are more pounders of the strike. Could, could it be to do with just different flexibility <coughs> levels? So just in terms of the fact that there's so much more rotation that that actually kind of shallows out the bottom, they're kind of catching at the bottom of the arc because the hips are already on the way back up. If, if they're rotating harder, they're yeah. pulling harder. Yeah. So if they're rotating harder, they're pulling harder. Mm. And at that point, there has to be a stall out. Yeah for the golf club to swing. Yeah. So I think it's, it, it's a little bit cause and effect, mm. but the harder you pull on it, the more you have to let it swing at yeah. some point. And I think with guys, they, they, they pull hard, but they also can square it up, push down on it. And of mm. course, when you've got added club head speed, you've got way more ball speed, yeah. way more loft, Mm -hmm. Hitting down isn't such a, yeah. a, a problem. Of course, mm. a lady golfer that hasn't got the ball speed and they're hitting down and they're narrow, all of a sudden they're going to have barely any ball yeah. flight. So invariably you'll tend to see more of a picker. Look at that for an explanation. Yeah, there go you on. Go. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, One more of those and then we'll jump back across. We'll go, yeah, and John Pockett's asked was more for me. Oh, so yeah, I'll perfect. Well, let me ask you that. Bit, let yeah. me ask you that one. So John well. Puckett, good afternoon from the States. Good evening, John. Nice to have you with us. Um, can you explain the bend profile of the KBS and taper, uh, KBS dollar, taper, yeah. Yeah, KBS ta dollar, dollar taper? taper yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, KBS taper, dollar taper. Yeah, uh, Money and, taper. Yeah. and what, are the, uh, what are some other shafts that share a similar profile? Thank you. So the, well, there are two elements to the dollar taper. It, it is a stiff tip shaft, but it isn't a tip heavy shaft. So it's actually a really 
it, it still never gets counterbalanced, but it's a very evenly balanced. So they've reinforced the tip, made it very stable at the tip end, so it's a lower spin shaft. Um, you're going to get several other shafts that are as tip stable, but most of them will be more tip heavy. So if you think of something like a, you know, again, the profile's different, but a Modus, Modus 120 is very tip stiff, but it's tip heavy. Um, to get that even balance and tip stable is relatively unique to KBS. They're, they're one of the best at doing that. So um, maybe a, a, an Obina CT125 um, from a balance point of view, but that is on the heavier end of the dollar tapers. So um, for that kind of balance, weight and tip stability, the dollar taper is pretty unique. If you're tuning in for the first time on uh, Monday evening, this is our regular live show that we do every mm. week, 6 p.m from Precision Golf in Surrey in the United Kingdom. Uh, it's streamed both on the Precision Golf and Good Golf Coaching YouTube channel. So do go over and check out both channels depending on where you're watching from. And do fire in your questions because we'll mm. do our very best to answer them all within our allotted one hour slot. Not always easy these days. Uh, mm. Sam Barnes asks, uh, would like to thank you to Simon for the full bar fitting this morning. I've already spoken about that one. <laughs> we'll move swiftly on. <laughs> Hi guys, can you test the new Ping G430 Max 10K versus the PXG Black Ops head versus the TM Q10 10K head with the Ventus Velocore blue tip shaft? Right. You Very quickly, going. shall we hit that let's, shot on, and then I'll that. move it off that screen. Let's do that, let's do that. We'll get this one out of the way. Yeah, brilliant. Just because this is just a bit of fun. Okay. So, so 158 yards. 158. Playing eight yards uphill. 158. And playing into a bit of wind because that's what Mr. Mitchell had. So it's playing roughly about a 180, 85 yard shot. 185? Okay. I'm going with seven. God, 185? Oh, that's, oh, I'm not sure I can Ooh, get... Between uh, yeah, 180 to 185, that's... Yeah, six. I'm going to go with a hard seven. That, that is hard. what Mr. Mitchell went with, a chippy one. So, and he's he a went with a chippy one. So oh, okay. Chippy seven oh, arms. okay. Charming, charming. Can one of us yeah, get close uh, to uh, holding it out? And, and, that, and that flag there... It's pretty close. I think it was maybe a couple of yards further left than that, but it's a pretty close flag to one. Right there, okay. If I come up woefully short, I'll be going for the five iron. <laughs> Get left. It's the right Good. club. It's the right club, right. I've got to have another go at that. Can I have another yeah, go? Yeah, I'm taking two goes each. That was terrible. That was terrible. Here's the, here's the wind. Even though it's straight uh, into the wind, pushed it right. <laughs> oh, there you go. Ooh. There you go. Come on, come back now. Well, that's a pretty good effort, that. Pretty good effort. Oh, oh. Okay, I don't mind that. I don't mind no, that. No, that's, that's good. I'm glad the seven iron got there. I only go with a smooth six. Not as manly as you. Well, you're into wind, you're going to hit it further than I do with your flight anyway. He has hit this about 17 times, by oh, the way. Hello. I, I came hello. in here. Yeah, you've hit Hello. It. Oh, that's naughty. Sure. Oh. That's filth, and that, my friends. Second only to Mr. Mitchell. Is precision. Is precision. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stick this back on, uh, that, back, my on friends, the, back on the tee. Is precision goal. Yeah, right, so let's so get those. Let so me get, get those. Those. So those. He's going to dash QI off and 10 get max, there. max, 10K, uh, PXG yeah. Black Ops, and yeah. the Velocore. Ping 430, Black Ops, Q10, Velocore. I'm going to jump across and answer another question on here if there is any. Martin Wheatley, hi gents, I had a, had a iron fit October 2023. My six iron is coming out at 18 degrees launch. Is this too high? T150 KBS Tour 1110V. Oh, he's only poured in a little Diet Coke and there is other Cokes out there if you would like to choose from. He only bought <laughs> one though, didn't he? Yeah, but you don't drink Diet Coke, do you? No, not really, no. 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 You're more of a red wine man. <laughs> uh, so, so did you hear Very the question dirty. that just came no, in? Uh, no. Uh, the, question, the question that just came in from a lovely Mr. Martin Wheatley. Hi, gents. I had a Iron Fit in October 2023. 
My six iron is coming out at 18 degrees launch. Is this too high? T150 KBS Tor 110V. Um, it, it really depends on angle of attack. So if you're not, if you, if you pick it a bit more, if you're kind of one or two degrees down, then 18 degree launch isn't that high. So it depends also where the spin sits. Um, if you're four or five degrees down, an 18 degree launch, then that probably is a little bit high. Um, so if you're 18 odd launch and spins around the 5,000 mark, that's in a pretty good flight window, so. Very good. Jams TV says, looking forward to my first lesson with Stuart tomorrow. If I'm not told my swing is garbage, I'll be very disappointed. Now listen, <laughs> you don't need to encourage me because I, I, I play be a very, very straight bat. I thought, I thought you'd be very, uh, very tactful, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, I'm, not, I, I'm really not a tactful golf coach. I'm really not, but no, I am, I am, I am. No, I'll be very, very kind, I'll be very, very kind. Right, so I've got each of these in a nine degree. Let's go the, uh, the 10K first. God, I've picked a narrow fairway there, haven't I? I'm into 10 miles an hour wind, I'm getting rid of that one. <laughs> Get rid of that. Uh, just so that that then doesn't affect how Robin, they... Robin Morton asks, nice to see the T-shirt back. Huh. Uh, um, what are your thoughts on posting your front leg? I'm a massive believer in it. Wouldn't fit in the po post box, would it? <laughs> post. Post as hard as you like. Post as hard as you like, and as early as you can. Oh God, let's go all kinds of thoughts in my head now. <laughs> That's narrow. Where's narrow, this? Yeah. This is, is this uh, where Copperhead. The... Yeah, this oh, is where they this just where played. they played Valspar this that's, weekend. That's why we hit the shot that Keith Mitchell just saw. Got it, got it. So Have very, very, very stable feel, hence the 10K with the ping. Have they, Have they moved the Valspar this year? Because I'm no. sure I did. It's the same time. Yeah, still at Copperhead, yeah. And same t same time of the year. Uh, oh, it might be. Yeah, it's pretty similar. Pretty similar, I, I think. I thought I covered that at Sky, on Sky Sports. I did cover that on Sky Sports, but I don't remember it being. Would it be slightly cover. later normally? I think it was yeah. later. So that one for me, spin three one, but I'm mean very very straight. Yeah. You know, nice. So which is what you'd hope for out of this. I'll just give it one more. Is it about six hundred shots? So it should be warmed up. Sorry. I think I might have covered that on Sky Sports, yes. <laughs> so, doing exactly what it should I do. Mean, very, very straight. How many balls, come on, how many balls have you hit today? No, today. Today. Like the two we've hit there and two 40. others. You're such a fibber. That's been the whole <laughs> fitting bay. I'm so that one a bit of a better hit, lower spin, but incredibly stable. Mart Martin Williams asks, what is the difference between the Mitsubishi AV shafts yeah. And the 1K Mitsubishi, please. So the 1K has their super, super top end premium materials. The, the AV is still a good shaft, but it's, it's not got the top line 1K quality materials in. So the 1Ks will feel a bit smoother, will structure be a little bit more stable, um, which just helps to hold spin, keep the flight down a little bit more. Um, just really geared at a heavier load um, from the player. Um, the AVs are the ones they use in for stock shafts. So they're still an aftermarket shaft, the AV series, but they're an entry level that the brands use as a stock shaft for a bit more kick, a bit Robin, more cost effective. Robin Morton says, thank you, and hope the T-shirt is more spectacular next week. <laughs> I'm gonna bring <laughs> it out. Well, if he wears one out. of those, you won't, be able, you won't be able to see him. Yeah, It'll just be, just be like a kind of that. I'm gonna bring out the big screen. guns next week. I'm bringing out the big guns. Right, so QI 10 Max. which in theory should be slightly more draw bars. But for me, I do know weight back opens the face, so. Yeah. While you're hitting that, Chi Therapy. Hi guys, uh, nice to have you back again, Chi uh, Therapy. Uh, is, in your opinion, a putter fitting just as important as a nine or wood fitting? Love the Monday evenings when you are on. Thank you very much. Um, it's equally, if not more important. Um, you know, the putter's the, the club you use the most in the bag. Um, so to make sure that you're at mo and you're very least confident with what you're doing with it, but that it complements your stroke, um, you know, loft, making sure the ball's rolling correctly, it mass massively key, yes. So a little bit more spin with that one, um, you know, versus the pink. Again, very, very stable across the face. I can definitely feel that wanting to open a bit more. I towed that a bit. But yeah, for one that I haven't, wasn't middled. 
that's um, that's quite nice. Yeah, a little, I think a little more flight though. I think. If you are new to a Monday evening, yeah. uh, 6 p.m. every week, Simon and I, uh, we always host a little show talking about golf equipment, golf coaching, streamed on two channels: Good Golf Coaching and, of course, Precision Golf, the home of it all. Uh, down in sunny Surrey uh, in the south of England. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to find them on. We will test any golf club and we'll demo any golf tip that you would like to know about. Yeah. So QI10 Max, a few, a few hundred revs higher. The well hit one is where the higher spin one was with the ping. The ping came out a bit lower on the second hit. All right, black ops here, right. She's got a nice looking head, this actually. Doesn't sound quite as nice, but um, a little harder sound to it. Is that my, yeah, I mean, my you, foursomes I mean, partner is going to be enjoying just, watching this. Smethers, just, Smethers, should we, should we get under here hear it now? Exactly the same spot for about seven shots. Two, four. Okay, not bad. So more club speed than that, a little less ball speed. This is something with the Black Ops. They seem they've been very consistent for spin, not quite as much ball speed as some of the other heads, but very stable. Nice. Nice. I haven't actually missed a fairway. You haven't missed the fairway yet. I'm getting a bit bored with it, to be quite honest. <laughs> so, yeah, so that one, got to be better on spin. Yeah, so the, the ping's the lowest spin. This one sits in the middle. Tell me a little more spin, but ball speed wise, proportion of smash on the Black Ops, a little bit less than the other two. Tom Ashmore asks, evening both. Yeah. Good evening, evening Tom. Tom. Uh, do you have an ideal yardage gapping between clubs? And does this vary depending on speed? Also, looking forward to a fitting in June. Yes and yes. Yeah, I mean, the more speed you have, the, the more your gaps are, uh, need to be a little bit bigger. Um, otherwise, you end up with a very, very long set of wedges um, in terms of distance wise. But um, do you have, yeah, so you generally, if you're at kind of moderate speed, around the 10 odd yard per club, um, but actually as your speed goes up, it can end up sort of 12 or 13 yards per club, maybe even 15 for the really, really kind of long players, um, just proportionally trying to get as, as even a spread through the set as possible. Very good. Uh, Michael Barber asks, hi guys, what would be the difference between a club that is stamped tour issue only over one that a club golfer would buy off the rack? A lot more expensive. Um, with some of them, I mean, like, if you take a Scotty Cameron putter, um, they're a, just a very, very low volume, in principle, just slightly tighter tolerances. Really, you're looking at slightly tighter tolerances, and on some of the drive heads, they're going to sit a bit flatter, a little bit more open. Um, there are some prototype series they do as tour only, which are slightly different to the production models. Um, but most of the time, uh, you can't get them officially, and it'll cost you a lot. Golf nerd, <laughs> have you ever had any experience with injuries due to hitting golf mat off mats too much? Yeah, yeah, it depends on how you deliver the club in the same way as if you're a leading edge guy, a mat is nasty business for mm. you. If you're more of a collector, then it's not really too much of an issue. Mm. But if you're someone that pounds it a little bit more, takes a lot of divot, then you are going to be susceptible mm. for elbow issues, shoulder issues, and of course, back issues as well. Yeah, off, off a mat like this, where there's a pile about an inch thick, that takes, that absorbs and moves with the strike. So this sort of mat's a very different surface to the kind of ones you're going to use at a lot of driving ranges where there's that much kind of hard rubber underneath and about that much felt. Uh, so I, you know, over the winter, years back when I was playing full time, um, elbow, wrist. Um, from because basically the club had stops and jars at impact, whereas with a mat like this, it moves through impact. So you, you get your left less wrist impact. or right wrist? I can't. It was. I can't remember which way around. Right, I think right. it was left wrist and right sure, elbow. Sure, wasn't your right wrist? No, no not okay. sure. Um, okay. But it was whichever one. It was the opposite way around, yeah. way around, and I was I was out for a couple of weeks as a result. I'm going with it. It was your right wrist. You never girlfriend then. Um, anyway, Nigel asks, hi gents, need a club between How five wood and four iron. <laughs> it took him a while to get yeah, it, yeah. but it's all right. Hi gents, need a club between five wood and four iron. Would you recommend seven wood or four hybrid? Don't want gapping uh, to be too close. I use TaylorMade Stealth 2 plus in woods, thanks. 
So there's a bit of a definitely maybe answer to this because it depends what your ball flight's like. Um, if you generate a bit of launch, then a seven wood's going to balloon up and a four high is going to give a better flight. If you're a lower ball hitter, the seven wood's going to get up higher and carry and land softer. So you yeah, both will do the job. The seven wood's going to go higher, land softer. The, the four high is going to come out flatter and produce a stronger flight. And depending on where your flight is generally will determine which is the better one for you. Andrew Morrison, sorry Andrew, I've missed your question. Evening gents, uh, I have a bit of a toe strike with irons, better than a shank, a little <laughs> over the top and pull a bit in the downswing. I just found my uh, irons are D5 swing weight. Would this have an effect on toe strike? It certainly won't help if you're on the weak side, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, and this, I mean, D5, so the one thing, with, there are lots of ways that a club could get to D5. You could be six foot four and play three quarters inch longer than standard and then d5 isn't that heavy um so it, it, there's a little bit of a question mark as a, with the spec as to how it's got there but if it's standard length and d5 and not a heavy shaft then then they're pretty head heavy and and that will force you to have to fetch the head a bit more and that'll throw your basically your balance and your posture out a little bit so it the answer is more than likely but i couldn't be certain how exactly yeah. Horse Racing Legends, nice to have you back with us, uh, HRL. Uh, my Callaway UT 18 degree, utility 18 degree, has a Nippon Modus 3 extra stiff, 129 grams, struggling a bit with it. My iron speed is 88 and the 7 iron, uh, my iron speed is 88 with the 7 iron. Mm. Uh, could, hit, uh, could it benefit from a Ventus Velocor 105 shaft? Again, definitely, maybe. Um, I mean, it, it could be that if you if the if that if you have that shaft in your irons and it swings well, and we probably find in a driving iron, it's pretty fifty-fifty that you know. So I play the same shaft in my driving iron as I do my irons. If I go lighter, I lose the club and lose the timing. Um, and then you know we get a lot of players that need to go five, ten grams, ten, fifteen grams lighter than the main body of their irons, where you're making a bigger swing making a bit more of an acceleration through the lighter weight helps come with them. So um, the answer is possibly, um, but it's really a case of just make sure, I mean, with that one, make sure you go somewhere you can test it because that could be a very expensive mistake. Yes. Uh, JP Cole 2011, Laura Davies, what a beast she was in her prime. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean. Agreed. I, th I think underrated. Um, I think very much so. David Graham, hi guys. Any chance Simon could hit the Cobra Dark Speed versus the King Tech Hybrids 17 degrees and compare them to the Aerojet, which is impressed, which has impressed me last year? I'm looking to replace the Form 5 wood. So Aerojet, we don't have in the mix anymore because that one's now cycled out. Um, I can hit so comparable offs in the other two. So I'll do that. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Um, so we've got a little question come in on my channel. Uh, Martin Wheatley, uh, okay, so Martin Wheatley, Simon, asked earlier, uh, his six iron is coming out at 16, uh, is 18 degrees launch. Is that too high with the T150? His uh, angle of attack is three to four degrees down. Um, so one other, one other, it depends where the spin is. Yep. It's on the higher side, uh, three or four down. Yep. Um, you generally at three or four down, I probably want to see more like kind of 16, 17. Um, so um, it is on the higher side, but depends where the spin is. So if you're hitting down it and getting that launch, chance there's a little bit of ad loft going. So chance that it might, might pop up a little bit. Yep. Mark Rowley asks, hi fellas, Stuart, quick explanation of Skillis, please. I'm in Stoke and would love a lesson, price and format. Cheers, keep up the good work. Mark, how it works is Skillis is a remote coaching app uh, for people that requested me uh, to help them with their game across the globe or via my YouTube channel. Go to the Skillis app, you upload a 7-iron and a driver face on and down the line. And I will give you a full swing review. I'll then send you uh, lessons or drills to make changes to your golf swing. Then I ask you to send back videos of you applying those drills and then I ask you to go away and practice for 10 days or so and then send me back some new swings after having done the practice. Another review, another bit of feedback and then we go from there. Price of that is $190 via the Skillist app uh, and you can find all the information on there, Mark. Hopefully that's uh, of use for you. 
So you're going to whop one away with... Yep. got the, uh, the King Tech. These, um, we've got both in a 19, so I'm comparing like, comparing like with like with a 19. So um, the tech's very versatile. You've got different places you can put the weight to move center of gravity, more toe side, heel side. Um, so I've got it in a neutral setup. I think this, this hybrid's underrated, actually. It's a, it's a really nice all-round club. Oh, look at that. I like this hole. Um, so <laughs> I should play less often, more often. Um, so 4-2 you know, on spin, it's, it's quite a mid-spin head. Um, the Aerojet was an absolute cannon. So actually, that's one of the elements. Aerojet was a very strong flighted head from a spin point of view. Um, so this will spin it up a little bit more, very much kind of mid-flight. If I put the dark speed head on pretty quickly. We've got uh, Ross Matthews. Good evening, Ross. Uh, yeah, Ross. Lovely yes. client of mine. Evening both. Good evening, Likewise. Ross. <clears throat> Super nice guy. He swung it well the other day. Yeah, doing yeah. well. Doing well. Thanks to Simon for the great driver fitting on Friday and Stuart's continued support. Could we get a latest on what's in the bag for both of you, Ross? Ooh. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. We can do that. So uh, very good. Dark speed. So the... Tech has an adjustable hosel, so you can change loft up and down and face angle, draw bars. The dark speed is just fixed, so there is no versatility in that respect to it. A little bit more compact head, actually. So we'll see where, a little bit fady. That's a hotter flight. So you can see from a distance point of view, that's flown, gone. So that, I'm gonna do one more just to make sure that's not a silly reading on spins, that says 2,000. Yeah. This was pretty low when I hit it first time round. I didn't think it was that low. But, um, it's a rotten swing. <laughs> You've used all your good ones I up. Know, yeah, I peaked. We'll see where the spin is anyway. It was I would expect this to be a flatter flight. So a so little low on the face. So the dark speed is going to be a little more penetrating design for distance, the tech a little bit more mid-flight. Very good, very good, very good. You know what that uh, shows, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> Excuse me, absolutely. Uh, Nick Luton asks, uh, hi gents, loving the show as always. Can you offer a tip which helps keep the arms in front of the body during the downswing, please? I can offer you up that, Nick. It, it, it really, this is a, a trend uh, that everybody has talked about for many years, trying to keep the arms in front of the body. Now, if you think about what we're doing, we're, we're trying to move the golf club around us really quite quickly and it's super easy for the body to turn harder. Now, if you read and watch enough golf content, you will be discouraged from pulling on the golf club. And if you pull on the golf club, what ends up happening is you create lag and load in your downswing if your grip is light. Now, the more lag and load you create in a downswing, the more you are gonna create downstrike and the more you're gonna make a club face arrive back open, which is why you need to make sure that you have a good grip. The reason why I'm telling you this is because getting your arms in front of your body more on the way down may actually be a hindrance to you because if your arms are stuck behind you, they are doing that for a reason, to give you more time to unload the golf club. So you might want to look at why your arms are getting stuck behind you rather than just trying to fix what you see, and that's the arm stuck behind you. But a really good drill is to take your right hand, pop it on your right elbow, sorry, take your left hand and pop it on your right elbow. I thought you were playing games there, wasn't it? <laughs> and make a backswing and make some swings where you feel like the right elbow doesn't ever track back behind your chest. So you can see if I turn and face you there, you can see my right elbow is still in front of my body. I now make a back swing, it's still in front of my body. I now make a swing. And as I swing through here, I'm not allowing my right hand to stay behind my trunk. If you were to then go and feel that, start to feel how your arms move in front of you, and then the first thing that you do is you wang one off to the right, you know that you are absolutely working on the wrong drill. Because that is the very reason why your arms want to stay behind and unload the club head. So if your oh, you arms- You really hit yourself in this shape. <laughs> so if your arms are out of shape, you really want to look elsewhere in my opinion. 
But if you want a really interesting video on um, how to pull the golf club, uh, check out a video that I did a good few months ago called Power Up. I've got a pressure mat uh, under my feet and I'm in the gym uh, pulling on the golf club and showing you how to use your feet. It's a really good one to understand how pulling is super important. Just to add on to that, there is one other reason the club could be getting behind you and your arms behind you is if it's heavy. Yep. So that's another area. If you struggle to get the synchronization and, to, and the club keeps getting stuck behind, have a look at your club weights. If the shaft weight's heavy, that could well be a very good reason for it as yep. well. Very much so. Hopefully that answers the question for you, Nick. Richard Skinner, thanks, Simon. Brilliant show. Thank you uh, very much. Tom Ashmore, hi, gents. Uh, how do you typically weight shafts to irons? Sorry, I thought we'd already asked this question, but uh, typically weight hybrid shafts compared to iron shafts for slower swing speed players and good hybrid heads for a higher handicapper. Thanks. So I, really the shaft weight proportions, it, it really does vary player to player. Um, you generally tend to find that for the kind of mid higher handicapper or the lower speed player, you're gonna go lighter because we're trying to get the speed, we're trying to get, you know, get through the ball to get, get the loft on the back of it, get the flight up. So heavier is just hard work and hard to time. So you normally would go a little, drop weight a little bit quicker into the hybrids for the moderate speed player. Um, and then really, it's all about what kind of launch profile. So, you know, there are a lot of the hybrid heads are really pretty user friendly now, um, but you've got something like a TSR1 Titleist hybrid, which is like a small fairway wood that adds a bit of launch and adds a bit of spin. Uh, and then you've got a head like the Callaway, the, um, the AI Smoke, which is a very low spin head that if you, someone hits a high fade, then that just gets it going forward. So it just depends on what you want from a ball fly as to which head suits best. Very good recap there. Uh, Nicholas Evans, hi chaps, quick cue on the new Ping i530 irons. How much will they differ performance wise from the i500s? Assume difference in lofts may be the main factor considering a purchase of second hand i500s. Um, the 500s are going to be a slightly harder clickier note. Um, but I mean, 500s rather than 510, so they, the 530s will be better across the face. That's one that there's more tungsten in the sole, and they are going to be a little bit more forgiving. Uh, certainly, that's one of the aspects you're going to notice with any of the heads now with the tungsten heel and toe. Um, that, you know, take a T150 is so much more user friendly than they used to be. So, a miss hit will definitely be better with a 530. Out in the middle, the 500s were a bomb. So, they'll, they'll, they will go. I no matter what left loft they're out there are strong hitting heads. So um, obviously pricing wise, the 530s are gonna be pretty strong. Um, so from a value point of view, the 500s could be a very good option. We've got another 10 minutes, just over 10 minutes left. Do get those questions coming in. We will gladly hit or test anything you would like and any coaching questions, feel free mm. to fire them over. Paul M, evening guys, great show as always. Thank you, Paul. Would you consider a Ventus Blue TR50 regular driver shaft similar to a Tensei 55 stiff? Uh, not really. Um, the materials in the Velocore and the TR in particular are much, much more stout in the grip end, so it's still going to feel firmer. Um, you're still looking at a Tensei 55 stiff if it's the AV. Was it the AV? Um, it was the Tensei 55 and the uh, Blue so, TR 50. So, I mean, the Blue TR is still, you know, the Blue is still a very tip stable shaft and the TR with the butt weave is, it makes it even more stout. So that's still, even in the vertical ones regular, that plays as good as a stiff in many other shafts. Um, so that's still gonna play in principle lower spin and stronger feeling than the Tensei 55 in the stiff. Golf Nerd 3, what other sports do you guys play and what would you challenge the other in? Do anything anymore? Um, what would I? What would I challenge Stuart at? Well, he does the gym more than I do, so there's nothing with any endurance or strength. Um, no. I, cricket was my sports school. I'd, I'd take Squ you on at cricket. Squash, I was. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I'd, my legs would fail. Yeah. That's the I problem. Was a, I was a county yeah. squash player, and I, do you know what? I never played cricket. So ah, so we both picked good ones then. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That might be. I'd, um, <laughs> I'd get to the point where my legs would fail, and I'd hit my face on the on the wall at the front, <coughs> and, uh, and yeah. I could bowl a bouncer at you. Okay, and okay. <laughs> yeah, get me straight in the ghoulies. <laughs> uh, yeah, but they're coming to a YouTube video soon. Uh, horse racing legends, thank you, team. Yes, I've got the Nippon Modus three one twenty stiff in my Callaway MB irons. 
130 in the UT seems too much. Yeah, I mean, try, if you've got the one, is it 120 in the irons, try the 105 in the UT. Um, that's often quite a good way to go with that. Very good. Uh, Mike 55, gone through and continuing major swing changes since my fitting around a year ago. Do you think it's necessary to look at irons again and what can be changed easily without getting a whole new set? Um, I mean, it depends how major a swing, you, swing change you've had. Swing rates can easily be changed and often that's often the main thing that needs changing. If you've changed the delivery and the plane a little bit or the path, then it's not necessarily the whole thing that needs to change. Um, but the balance of the club, a little bit of potentially extra weight on the head. If you've, if you've got better technique wise, then you can deal with, a, you're, you're gonna move the club a little more efficiently. So a bit more weight in the head. And I say a bit, looking at one or two grams quite often. Um, that's normally where we're most likely to see, or a lot of light change as well. But the, but the head weight's normally where we're most likely to see an effective change after swing work. I've got a question coming from Phil on the other channel, which I'll come back to in a moment. Uh, Harry asks, hi lads, got fitted last year for Irons P770s with mm. NS Pro 950GH Neo Reg Flex. Yep. You know what that is? Yep. <laughs> with a swing so it speed. Like hieroglyphics yeah, well. I know. With the swing speed with 7 iron at higher 60s, I've since improved it to around 80. Well done. Very impressive. Do you think mm. it would be worth getting refit? Um, with that kind of change, yeah, if you think you've, you've changed basically 20% pretty much in club speed, which Ordinarily, like five or six miles an hour club speed on its own, I wouldn't necessarily say yes. Um, things are still fairly relevant, but if you've gone up 10 to 12, that that will mean some something will need to accommodate for that. Again, whether it's just a little bit of waiting, it could be that the shaft might now be, I'm not, it's not, not going to be too soft, but if you're putting that much more energy into the club, then the dead weight might need to be looked at, but certainly worth a recheck. Daniel Winterbottom, uh, hi gents, looking at new wedges. For some, uh, for some information, I tried the OEM wedge fitting apps. Some mm. say low bounce 60 and some say high, e.g. Titleist recommend D12 and Ping H8. Um, sadly, because this, this is because it's just an online thing and no one can actually see your delivery. Um, so it's... Yeah, I mean, it, it, um, it, there are a few things that go into the melting pot. One is what turf and sand you plough out regularly, uh, and then how do you deliver it? Are you someone who hits down on it, creates shaft lean? Um, they're all, I mean, the apps are all a great starting point, but as you've just described there, um, I, I can be slightly impolite about them, but I'm not going to on channel. Mm -hmm. But it's all a load of tosh, <laughs> really. <laughs> without <laughs> testing, without looking at your impact position. Yeah, exactly. That's the most important thing with wedges. Absolutely. I got a, a Niels Axelson. Oh, good evening, Niels. Nice to have you along, sir. Uh, I got a TSI2 5 hybrid with a 65 gram Tensei Blue, and it flies nowhere for me. I was fit with, uh, I fit to my JPX923 Hot Metal Pro with KBS C Taper Light Stiff. 110 grams. I mean, anyone reading this would think, what on earth are they talking about? Any, any hope to get the TSI 2 to perform, or is it, uh, or is it not for me? Um, I mean, the TSIs were a, a spinnier head. Let me just double check one. I'll just read one thing, which mm. I'm not going to uh, get any of the others. I mean, the, the 5 hybrid is a 24, I think, loft. So that, uh, that is going to go up pretty high. If you've got hot metal pro arms with a C, C taper light stiff, tip balanced, the hot metal pros, strongish loft, lower spin, and then you've got a TSI 2 that will hit, stick it right up your nostril. So it sounds like that, that might be a tough one. Stick it in a D1 setting and, and maybe go a little heavier, a little more tip stiff, but it sounds like the head might want to just hit it a little too high. Phil asks over on my channel, uh, Does hi. Would you me to do the hosting? Please, mm. please, please, ask away. Where is Phil, where's Phil? There's the bottom. Down the bottom there. Yeah, hi, good golf pros. It means you, not me. Um, any tips for the same rhythm and tempo through the bag? Tend to muscle and force the longer clubs. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, there's a there's a few ways you can go about it. Uh, one is a is a metronome. Uh, is a really good way of yeah. starting to feel uh, rhythm in your golf swing. And and obviously, as you go into the bag, the tempo is actually longer because the swing is longer mm. so you need to reduce the beats as you go up just one beat per club is a good way to start but if you're starting to force and muscle the club a bit more as it gets longer a few things you want to look at a the clubs as simon 
uh, intimated earlier, they might be a little bit heavy for you anyway. And if you feel like you need to hit it a bit harder to get the ball flighted, you might have some issues in how you're delivering the less loft. Mm. And I think that's really where you would want to start because I, I just don't go down the route of, oh, you swung that too fast. Because if you do swing it fast, the ball's going to go a long way. If you swing it slow, it's going to have no spin on it, particularly in the long irons, and it's going to mm. knuckle out the sky. So you do need speed in the longer clubs. I hit my four iron harder than I hit my seven iron. And I hit my hybrid harder than I hit my four iron. And so on. So I wouldn't worry about trying to swing it harder with the longer clubs. If they fit well, they should be sympathetic with the swing that you're trying to put on them. And if they don't fly well, look at the swing mechanics, not trying to change your tempo and swing easy. If you swing easy with a long iron, it'll fall out the sky like a wounded mallard. So I think a bit of club fitting and a little bit of technique in terms of delivery would be a better way to go than just thinking about a bit of a tempo change. Mm. I guess one of the one of the things, one of the questions last week that got asked to Matt, Matt and me was um, about kind of pet hate with things that you know, people say in a fitting. One of the things that I think that other golfers say to one another is, oh, you ought to slow down, oh, you ought to... Actually, we all swing, we all have a natural rhythm based on your physiology and your musculature. You're either someone who has fast twitch and goes and creates fast acceleration, or it's a more gradual tempo. And you've got to tune into that. Go with what you naturally do, because you're going to do that best. Yeah, absolutely right. Joshua Belcher asks, Hi gents, the hazardous Gen 4 Black 6.5 driver shaft, what are some similar profiles to try? Okay, so Gen 4 Black, stiff tip. Um, it's <coughs> within the weight categories, it sits at the lower half. So um, if we're going to go, is it this, if it's a 60, then I would say, ooh, well, similar profile is easy because it's a stable tip. In terms of balance point, um, I mean, we could go there with something like the Nitro Range TPT, but that's a very expensive shaft. Uh, I would say actually Acra, the, um, the TZ6. 60 sits a little bit light, it's sort of 58 grams, but that, that's not a million miles off. Uh, let's think of one more, uh, one more even balance through, just looking at the range there. Um, maybe actually Speeder NX Green for something really stout, really super premium as well. That's like 66 grams, so slightly heavier in the green, but really stable tip. Aidan asks, is there much of a difference between Project X LZ6, 120 grams stiff, and KBS Dollar taper, 120 gram stiff. Yeah, a lot. Um, so the LZ stands for loading zone. Um, it's in principle designed to load a little more in the, the upper half of the upper half of the shaft, but it swings r really quite tip heavy. The dollar taper, stiffer tip, but um, a higher balance point. So suit two totally different swings, even though the weight is the same. Very good. E and M any shafts um, similar to a Ventus Red. Uh, Ventus Red, yeah, um, so not, not quite as stout in the tip, um, something like the over in the Asawa um, series, that's got a little more balance in the tip, a little bit more tip response. Um, it's not quite as heavy, but the IZ series, again, if you're looking for something a little more responsive, a little spinnier, um, that's not a bad option as well. Uh, those would be two good options, yeah. Very good. Hugh Jackson, evening gents, good evening Hugh. Uh, with mention of the Hewitt, what changes do you make to your bag setup? Uh, to play windy links golf and what do you think are the ideal launch conditions for playing into the wind? Um, well, I play a driving on two on anyway, so I don't change my bag. Um, uh, and in terms of, I mean, so for those that don't know, Halford Hewitt is uh, a inter schools alumni tournament down at Royal St George's, Royal Sankport uh, in about three weeks time. And I'm just fingers crossed it's not horrible weather, um, which it probably will be now. Um, so it's scratch foursomes match play. Um, so it's quite a hard format. Um, really in terms of playing it, driver wise, people change their flight too much. The, the ball doesn't, if you're hitting it well, doesn't spin that much anyway. So the biggest mistake you can make is trying to take too much flight off because you lose carry distance. Um, so just really smooth the tempo out. Um, don't go after it too hard. Um, go up a club, swing smooth. Uh, I just put the ball a little further back in my stance just to flight it down a little bit in heavy, heavy, heavy wind. If you're a very good player, then you can play some specialist, really kind of low stingy shots, but strikes king in wind. You've got to strike it cleanly. Uh, and that's the most important thing. Always go with a lesser divot in the wind. Mm. Take less divot, pick it off the top, and you'll yeah. help your spin rate. 
and it will go through it a little bit better. Ooh. There was a question about bag makeup, <coughs> current bag makeup. Yes, um, which I'll, I'll yeah. we'll fizz through very fizz quickly. Fizz through your one. Uh, Driver TSR3, 8 degree, uh, VA composites, Sinister 65, stiff. Three Muir, wood. Muir oh, irons. Muir irons, yeah. Muir 5 to pitch in those, and I currently have a uh, PXG Gen 2 T4 iron, and I play a Strixon ZXU driving iron. Uh, three wood is Paradigm Triple Diamond. Uh, 15 degree with a bit of lead tape on the bottom and Kyoshi Purple 75 stiff uh, and some uh, Voki raw wedges 50F, 56D and a 60M. Putter? Uh, putter is a Betanardi Queen Bee 11. Um, I got it, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit pimped, uh, black finish, the, um, the slightly different carbon, uh, DASS -S carbon, uh, short neck for a little bit of toe flow uh, and uh, black shaft, standard pistol grip, heavy head. And I'll do mine next week because I haven't got a clue what I play. <laughs> <laughs> Golf clubs. Yeah, nuts and bolts. Yeah. I think mm. we have answered. Uh, oh no, JP, I'll answer down to Aiden. <clears throat> JP Cole 2011, same question as other person. Have G425 irons and woods, hybrids and driver. Is it easy to replace shafts or should I replace all the clubs in the last four months and hard work have gone from 28 to 15? Well done. Very good effort, that. Um, effort. The heads, it's, it is easy to change to the shaft and, and don't think that just because, you know, like Monty got to world number two playing a game improvement iron head. You don't, it doesn't necessitate, the head could still be a perfectly good head for you, but it, by the sounds of it, the improvement in your game you might have developed beyond the shafts you have, and potentially what you have might still be working really well. So um, there are lots of options open to you, and a good fitter will give you all options that are viable. Aidan asks, does the modus shaft have a similar bend to ping tour shafts? Uh, well, the, the ping tour shafts are a graphite and the modus are a steel. Um, so the modus are stiff, well, the one, 105 and 120 are stiff tip and softer butt section. The 130 uh, and 115 are softer tip, stiffer butt section. Uh, the ping tour are actually very stable, uh, kind of, they're a very stiff handle end uh, with a little bit of kick in the tip, but um, they, one of them is, a, I think it's the, co uh, the cobalt, the, the goldy one, is a slightly stiffer tip, but they tend to be a bit more counterbalanced. And one final question since it's just come in. Mark Griffin, have you got the new Tiger driver shaft? If so, what is your opinion? Seen some others saying really good and not just because Tiger plays it. No, the, yeah, the VF uh, series from Graphite Design we do have. Um, it, it is a very good. They've gone for a more what one would call kind of Western profile. It's a more stout profile. It's designed more at PGA Tour. Um, Victory Force, very good intel from James there. I didn't know that. He's, he, um, he just, he's been he on just, Google. Yeah, um, he just came up from drinking his martini and smoking his cigar. Oh, two, two of them. Of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, the VF is more tip stout. Um, they're <laughs> most stable, took over from the GP range, more tip stable shaft. Um, it, it, yeah, anything graphite design is very, very good quality, but it suits the more kind of the higher speed player rather than a softer loader, which most of the graphite designs historically have tended to be. Fantastic. Mm. We got through all of your questions cool. uh, and we, we really appreciate points? it. We, yeah. <laughs> we do this every yeah. single Monday night, yeah. uh, 6 p.m. from the studio. So mm. do tell your friends because the more yeah. interaction... Next Monday, Easter Monday. Not here. So we don't do it because Monday. we have our noses in some eggs. <laughs> do with that information what you will. Uh, busy week ahead for you. Yeah, um, I, I guess it still continues to be a very, very busy time of year. Um, and yeah, yeah that, that's not slowing down anytime soon, which is lovely. Relentless. Yeah. We've got well, an Thank you to all the people who watch you've been coming for fittings. It's been great. Very much so. Great to very see much so. We've got a fantastic little trip to Costa mm. Navarino. If you've not checked that out, check it out at uh, teamchallengetrophy.com. Uh, we've got a little uh, four team event going over to uh, Costa Navarino mm. in Greece. Simon and I, James. On a jolly, uh, playing with clients uh, mm. and friends, mm. and it's going to be a great week. But if you do want to join, make sure you sign up very, very, very soon. Yeah. Basically, we've closed that out or yeah. closing it out very shortly. Yeah, very much so. If you do have questions mm. uh, for us next week, drop them in the comments box below. We will be sure to get round to them. From Simon and I, we really appreciate you coming and joining us uh, this evening. Have a great week, and we we'll look forward to seeing you very soon.